It's almost like a communication between us. It's like decoding the canine. Think Like a Dog is the latest on a long list of films where you have worked with animals. But how did you get your first break? And what advice do you have for young people who maybe want to do the same sort of career? Of course, I grew up like obsessed with animals. I had every pet. I had snakes. I had guinea pigs. I had rabbits. I had dogs. I had cats. I, I love animals, but I never really cared working in the film industry and working with animals was like an actual job, you know, yeah. for some reason. So when I, when I moved to Los Angeles um, 20 years ago, um, I was working as a production assistant and uh, I highly recommend people work as a production assistant if they're interested in working in this industry because it's such a good opportunity to get your hands on everything. So I was working on a movie called The Matrix 2 wow, um, yeah. and we had some trained crows for a scene in that movie and I was asked to like help the, you know, the bird wranglers. And I remember like that was my moment where I had them come on set and they were in like their little khaki pants and their little button up shirts and had the crates for the crows and everything was so like well organized and they were so well trained and like they got this beautiful shot. And it was so amazing to me. It was like my moment where I was like, gosh, I really, really want to do that. How do I do that? And that's when I decided to make it my, my full-time career. When Oliver makes an incredible discovery. Make way for the total package, brains, personality, and good looks. Things will never be the same. It worked. Henry, I can hear what you're thinking. <sighs> you can hear what I'm thinking. Woo! You taste like a genius. So in the film we saw, Oliver develops this telepathic connection with his dog. So do you really feel like you create this sort of similar connection with the animals you work with? Actually, yeah, I do. I do feel like I, I, I uh, form like almost a telepathic connection because when you are training animals to like the capacity where we train them, you really have to know what they're thinking. Um, and that's the truth. That's the truth. Um, the things that other people probably can't see um, I know how they're feeling because they tell us how they're feeling, you know, the way their lips are, the way their tails are, like their eyes. I can see all that and it's almost like a communication between us, you know, um, it's like decoding the canine, you know, where um, they're always talking to us and telling us how they feel. And um, I'm lucky that I've worked in this capacity for as long as I have to be able to like you know, look at a dog and, and basically communicate with them. What you just said is a really cool question because no one's asked me that and I like it. It's true. It is like a telepathic communication. That, yeah. I'm, I feel like I'm learning so much right now, which is crazy. But uh, um, so cool. This might sound like a really stupid question. Is there a universal language for dogs or do dogs from different countries or like animals from different countries, do you have to communicate with them like differently? I think that there is a universal language to dogs. Um, there are different cues that we train them in whatever language that's native to us. Their yeah. language is universal, the way they speak to us you know, the way they, um, you know, communicate with other dogs. Um, but the way we communicate with them, like if I say sit, stay, speak, um, obviously in another country, in another language, that's gonna, those are just going to be different words. Um, but yes, yeah. So I think that um, their language, like a, that's an, another great question. Their language is universal to us. So all dogs can understand all humans. Duh, but you can't tell anybody. Obviously, you've had such an impressive career, like working on really high profile films like The Artist. What have been the most difficult animals to work with or train? And have you ever sort of had a moment where the pets have just like gone absolutely crazy and out of control and you've just had to deal with that? Yeah, I have had moments of that um, on set. We had like this scene um, a long time ago in a movie called The Jane Austen Book Club, where I had to train two uh, Rhodesian Ridgebacks. <laughs> for the movie and they had never been on film before and there was just this funny scene where they were supposed to go jogging uh, uh three of them i think were supposed to go jogging with the actress maria bello yeah and we, <laughs> you know how dogs get the zoomies oh. you know where they get really silly and like zoom around and that's what they did in the middle of the take so they're <laughs> action and they were supposed to run off leash with this woman in a field and they were like woo and they just like were running full speed for like 10 minutes they were just circling and running and it was so funny I couldn't like how can you get upset with that you know it was just so so funny and exactly and, yeah 
That's yeah, like and they, thing but, with dogs. But they, yeah, but they didn't get them on film. It was cute, but they didn't, you know, because the dogs kind of ran outside the filming. Um, uh -huh. So, you know, that happened, but that, you know, sometimes the animals are animals and, you know, and even though it is important that the animals are trained to perform and act, you know, sometimes they're just going to do something, you know, animal-like. And you have to have, I think as a filmmaker, you have to have a lot of patience when you're going to work with animal actors. So yeah. one thing that's always really important is the safety and welfare of the animals that you work with. So how do you always ensure that you always look after the animals in like the best way possible? They don't want to voluntarily be like, hey, I want to go make a movie and do 10 takes, you know, <laughs> um, even though we want them to. So I have to make sure that like the animals are, um, first of all, not overheated, they're not overworked, they're comfortable, they're resting, they're, they're giving a place to cool down on set. And I really fight for that. You know, I, I, I don't let people get away with um, making my dogs uncomfortable because, you know, even though the filmmakers may be maybe animal lovers, they get in the zone and they really want to make their movie and, and, you know, artistic people like, they just, they don't mean any harm by it, but they don't understand like the animal just needs a rest or they're going to get tired. Um, yeah. And I'm there to make sure that they're given that time, you know, and that they're not doing anything that's dangerous or scary. You know, so one of the things we, we, we deal with a lot is like an actor um, performing, you know, like, like they're upset you know, they're angry or, and, and that may just be a scripted thing. And the dogs in that scene, we have to be very careful um, because dogs don't understand that the person's acting. So if they're screaming and throwing things and, and upset, um, then and the dog is going to be like, oh my gosh, what's wrong with you? I'm really scared. And that's a big, big, big thing we deal with a lot. So there are things we train them to do um, that where they're never actually emotionally scared. They can't ever really be afraid because if you do that to them, it's not fair and they're not going to want to do it multiple times. The dog's going to be like, I'm out of here, you know? So I, I really, I really make sure that the dogs are never in a bad headspace when they're working. Yeah, that's just so great to hear. Like, obviously, like as an animal lover, you just want to know, like, everyone's like treated nicely and things like that. So yeah, we learned so much from you and it's been just crazy to learn so much about animals. So really, thank you so much for your time. And it's been such a pleasure to meet you. I've just, I can't believe this knowledge that I've just got right uh. now. So.